A very good evening to you. I'm Lisa Lord and making headlines. Poisonous creatures found in some imports and Barbadians are being cautioned. The island's youth told their ideas will propel the country forward. Efforts are being made to involve regular Barbadians in the medical marijuana industry. And in sports, the Bulls are this year's BABA Premier League champions. Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC News Night, starting now. And in our top story, authorities are tonight warning Barbadians about importing items into the island illegally in a bid to escape fees or checks. This is two poisonous creatures were discovered on an incoming shipment a few weeks ago. Our Rianne Phillips has the details. This curly hair tarantula and scorpion were discovered on a shipment of lumber coming from Honduras to Barbados last month. While officials from the Ministry of Agriculture were able to spot them through a routine inspection, entomologist Ian Gibbs says the outcome could have been very different if the creatures were smuggling to the country. If it were alive, yeah, it would pose a threat, but it is dead right now. We have it preserved in alcohol, right? And... Um, if creatures like that get into the island, yes, they definitely can pose a threat because they're venomous, right? And depending on the susceptibility of the uh, person who it stings, you know, there can be adverse effects. As a, a defense mechanism, they'll also push off here at you if you're going to, like, to try to, to feed on it or, or, or uh, capture it or so, it will expel your hair onto you that can get into your eyes or can get into uh, your skin and cause problems. Apart from wood, Mr. Gibbs explains many creatures tend to hide in plants or clippings and are often smuggled into Barbados after shipment. However, he stresses there are procedures which people can follow to get approval to bring plants or clippings into the island. There is a procedure, a fully legal procedure that you can use when you want to bring plants from overseas, you just make a visit to our plant quarantine section. And that is um, in Bridgetown, near Harrison College. And you can go in there and you fill out a form. And they will, then they will know what you want to bring in and where you want to bring it from so that they can tell you how you ought to bring it in. If it is allowed and if it is not allowed, obviously they will tell you no, you can't bring it because it might pose a serious risk to certain crops even that we grow here in Barbados. Anyone who comes across a strange creature can contact the Ministry of Agriculture to get it identified. Do not crush it because then it gives problems with the, the identification of it because there are certain characters on the bodies of these, um, these creatures that help to identify them and if you really smash them um, then it, it poses a whole lot of problems in getting the creature identified down to, down to a species level. Rianne Phillips, CBC News. The Minister of Youth and Community Development, Adrian Ford, is confident the creative imagination of Barbadian youth will help catapult Barbados forward. He says it's an area the Prime Minister has placed emphasis on. The Youth Minister encouraged young people to keep coming forward with their ideas as they must chart the course for the island. Now, the challenge was issued at the launch of the Video 246 project. It's a collaborative effort between the Youth Development Department and UNICEF. Over the next five weeks, several young Barbadians will be trained in the area of video production, creating content and programming. Come to us with the ideas and never think that your idea is a foolish one. All developments in this world, all, were created by the ideas and imagination of people. And I'm saying to you, and I implore you to use your creative imagination to help rescue and restore and rebuild this country. I want to start by saying that along with that, I want you to also to have a sense of giving back to your country. And Broadcasting Corporation is a partner in the venture. 
Acting General Manager Sherwood McCaskey welcomed the collaboration, noting video 246 is an indication there are still institutions and organizations in Barbados that recognize and understand the developmental role CBC is playing in the lives of Barbadians. In building communities and protecting our value system and in the holistic and sustainable development of our island Barbados. And of course, I can't forget the role we also have to play in the integration movement of the people of this region. This project provides the opportunity for CBC to reposition itself as a training ground for our youth. It provides the opportunity for CBC to help our youth to identify their hidden talents, their special abilities, and of course, to help the youth develop those. And communication specialist at UNICEF, Patrick Knight, encouraged the participants to make the best use of the opportunities provided through that program. Things normally don't happen before the time, but I think the time for this video workshop has finally come. And it's come at a time when the Ministry of Youth is more engaging and more dynamic. Almost every day, every week, they're pushing me to do something more. <laughs> And it also comes at a time when the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation, who has happily come on board in this partnership, when they're looking for more local content. Well, as we know, social media is fast becoming the main source of information for young people in Barbados. And as a result, Minister of Information Senator Lucille Mo says many people are no longer interested in reading books. She made the comments during the opening of a reading clinic for 70 boys with reading challenges. Sharika Griffith reports. Gone are the days when a child doing research would reach for a dictionary or an encyclopedia. These days, you're more likely to hear the phrase Google it or some other reference to technology. Information Minister Senator Lucille Moe says platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp are slowly replacing many of the traditional methods of information gathering. So right away, when we think of reading, we also got to remember that there are all these other modes of receiving information, which we see all the time in the Ministry of Information. And so once you can marry the two, the traditional with the non-traditional, I think we go a much further way in being able to embrace people and having their interests and in, in want to do what is still traditional, which is reading. Senator Mo was delivering remarks during the opening ceremony of the Babs Reading Clinic, which targets boys transitioning to secondary school but who have challenges with reading. Coordinator Dr. Astra Bab says of the four major tertiary institutions, only one, the Samuel Jackman Prescott Institute of Technology, has more males than females enrolled. On the other hand, she says Dodd's prison is mostly populated by what she calls functionally illiterate young men, the majority of which left school without any certification. The idea for the reading clinic was conceptualized because I thought if more of our boys develop the capacity to read, then their ability to reason would be enhanced. Furthermore, they would not become a liability to the state later on, as we would have plugged the pipeline from school to prison. The clinic is free because the Barbados Community College has waived the rental fee for using their facility. However, Dr. Bab says more donations are needed so that another 20 boys currently on a waiting list can be accommodated. Principal of the BCC, Annette Aline, offered parents some advice. They tell these young fellows when they're outside playing, come in here and sit down and read a book. And immediately it sounds like you're punishing them with reading. Make it more like a reward, let's do this together. Let's read and have some fun, rather than making it punitive. So as I was saying, from one parent to another, it's a journey. One step at a time, you're not in this on your own. And remember, just what you're going through, other people have gone through and they have succeeded. During the five-week clinic, boys who need it will receive counselling. Ten soldiers from the Barbados Defence Force will also be facilitating team-building opportunities. Sharika Griffith, CBC News. As Barbados moves towards establishing a medical marijuana industry, efforts are in the works to have ordinary Barbadians involved. And this was one of the points revealed as the topic was discussed on CBC TV 8's The People's Business, our Lorna Jones reports. 
Ordinary Barbadians looking to get involved in the medical marijuana industry may be able to access the necessary funding to start up their enterprises. And during the People's Business Program on CBC TV8, Attorney at Law Douglas Trotman revealed that plans were on the table to establish a credit union for this purpose. We are actually in a stage of creating a credit union on the Cooperative Societies Act. A credit union, not the, the Cooperative Society would be the uh, combination of small farmers, but a, the credit union like COB, um, you know, yeah. right, and that credit union will then serve as a means for its members to borrow collectively, and we'll be encouraging investors to put their money, and you do your loan arrangements. Chairman of the Drug Formulary Committee, Dr. Kenneth Connell, revealed the names of the five medical marijuana drugs now on that list. There is Sativex, that's a that's the branded name. Mm -hmm. I have to read this off my list. Uh, Epidiolex, mm -hmm. uh, there is also Anabasum, mm -hmm. as well as Nabilone and Marinol. Yeah, so those are approved products of, of medicinal, uh, of cannabinoids that have been approved on drug formulary. Dr. O'Connell says only trained doctors and pharmacists can prescribe and dispense medical marijuana. In fact, 150 of them recently completed training and nurses will also be included in the future. There's plans in the pipeline at University of the West Indies working in conjunction with the advanced practice nurses to have nurses involved in the whole cannabis conversation. But we're working first with the prescribers and the dispensers and those, those persons will be actually participating with the patient's health. The training is required as part of the Ministry of Health's policy. Lorna Jones, CBC News. Health Minister Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick says his ministry is actively tackling the issues which have affected the payment of some nurses in the system. He says that while the situation has improved in recent months, some nurses are still being affected. Yes, we've we had a number of meetings. Um, we attended a couple of meetings with the Ministry of the Public Service and we were able to re resolve a number of situations with people who were falling off of the smart stream for one reason or another. And only on Thursday I reported to Cabinet on this matter since I was presenting a paper dealing with nursing in Barbados and the way forward. And the Prime Minister has given the assurance that a meeting will be held with the various um, departments and stakeholders so that we can put this thing to rest because it is something that we do not like. We do not like the fact that people work and then when they're expecting to be paid that they're not being paid. That is something that we have to address. Minister Bostick has also given the assurance that in the quest to fill nursing positions, the ministry is actively seeking to source nurses from Barbados first. We are at the moment commencing a process trying to locate all nurses in Barbados who may not be working at this point in time. Those who would have graduated from community college but would not have passed the region, regional exam and that is to ensure that we um, facilitate the process for our own people before going elsewhere. But at the same time, we are looking, um, we've been advised that there are one or two islands, sister islands, especially in the Eastern Caribbean that may have an access, access, sorry, nurses, and if we can get some from there, we will go there. Regional stories now, and a security firm in Jamaica is on the defensive following a controversial fatal shooting involving its guards last week. Now, the guards have since been taken off frontline duty. We have a report from TVJ. Midway into a 48 seconds surveillance video, an interaction between three young men and individuals in a King Alarm vehicle. The interaction went on for approximately seven seconds before one of the men ran off and another while lifting his shirt as if to show the guards he was unarmed was shot by someone in the vehicle. Seconds later, an armed guard in the passenger seat emerged with weapons firing at the young man who earlier fled the scene. A third man went out of view of the camera while his friend was being shot at. That third person was later held and handed over to the police. The man who was shot by the guard was pronounced dead at hospital. The release from King Alarm says an imitation firearm was taken from the dead man and handed to the police. The statement from King Alarm reads in part, The preliminary report suggests that the fatal shooting was unfortunate and tragic but justifiable. 
Over in Dominica now, the police force there is being challenged by the Dominica Association of Evangelical Churches to do its job in reducing cases of lewdness in society. The association is speaking out on what it sees as increasing occurrences of indecent dressing and behavior by people in public. Marpin Television reports. The DAEC is of the view that those in authority should not turn a blind eye to the laws of the land, but instead play their role to uphold these laws. In my view, what's their laws on the books? Laws on the books are laws on the books. And if there are laws on the books, then the upholders of the law must ensure that the laws are upheld. Once you start deciding on which law to uphold and which one not to uphold, you begin to bring your professional integrity into question. And once your professional integrity is in question, then people are going to flaunt other laws right before you because you have allowed some others to, to, to go on unchecked. So yes, they do have a role to play. As a citizen, as a citizenry, we, we have to do quite some work on it. And the church is, is, is relentless in, in, in trying to ensure that we curb this thing. But those who are responsible, the professionals responsible for upholding the law, must themselves uh, execute whatever they have to do in that regard. Trinidad and Tobago's ruling People's National Movement has declared war on corruption and corrupt officers. And the party's political leader, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley, has called on the youth to reject any person or party that is corrupt and to work with the PNM to rebuild the society. We have a report from TTT. Addressing the PNM Sports and Family Day, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley said the opposition wants citizens to get accustomed to corruption. He added that is why they are publishing editorials condemning the Commission of Inquiry into the acquisition of land for the Point 14 Highway, which was initiated by the People's Partnership. That it found that there was a basis to inquire into public expenditure with respect to a multi-billion dollar project and to determine who did what, where, when and how. And the government is facing all kinds of hundreds of millions of dollars in claims because certain individuals may not have conducted themselves properly. So we ask for a commission of inquiry and that is so offending so many people.